Hiya humans. So today we're going to talk about um, a super famous example in probability theory um, called the birthday problem. Uh, and like it's very standard, uh, but it's really cool because basically what it's helping us do is see how a complicated problem is actually feasible in mathematics, um, in probability, using the language that we've been working with. Um, so it's a simple question um, and it's very well known. You've, you might have heard of it. Um, if not, I'm glad you haven't because it's like one of the coolest things I had ever seen the first time I saw it. So it'll be fun to share it with people. So we're going to start off easy. We start off with n people in a room and that's it. So we have n people. We're just going to go there. Uh, and the question we're going to ask is what's the probability that at least two people have the same birthday? So this will set as event A. Um, and unfortunately, we're going to have to ignore leap years. Um, so people born February 10 and 9, I'm sorry, don't murder me. Uh, but just to make the numbers easier, we're just going to pretend there's 365 days in a year. Uh, just, yeah, it's okay. Uh, so first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to order the people. So we have n people. We're going to put them in an order. Um, you get to choose the order um, from shortest to tallest, oldest to youngest, um, by your favorite hair color, whatever you want. Um, and we're going to use this order to kind of div decide what the total probability is. Um, so here, so we'll order the people. So we have, um, actually we'll do it. So we start off, so here, we'll start here. Now we start off with the first person. So what's the probability that two people have had, um, or that they have the same birthday as someone else? Uh, well, there's one probability, right? So there's one here to get to the first person. So I'll label, I guess this is one. Uh, and this is person one. Now, at this point, we have two directions we can go. They either have the same birthday um, as someone beforehand, right? Uh, so here we have, um, oh, so this is this is different birthday, right? So if they have a different birthday, um, or if they have the same birthday, we're done, right? So this is, there's a one in 365 chance that they have the same birthday. Um, if they have the different birthday, so this is, so say, we'll do same in green and different in red. So this same, uh, this is different. Uh, for people who are colorblind, um, I guess I never asked, let me know if the colors are bad, um, if there's better color recommendations. Um, hopefully they're okay. Um, but yeah, so... I'll also try to verbally say things to kind of help with this. So this top one is same, so same, and it'll always be same. Uh, and this bottom one is different birthday. So if it's a birth, so if we found one that's the same, we're done. Um, if it's a different birthday, then we keep going. So this is the second person. And again, we have two options. We either have same birthday or a different birthday. Um, now the different birthday here, if you look at, this is going to be 364 divided by 365, right? That's the total sum, right? The sum has to be equal to one. So here we have now a two in 365 chance, right? Because there's been two birthdays before that, the first person um, and the z for a second person. Um, and so, and if that happens, we end. If not, uh, we'll have a 363 divided by 365 chance um, that it's different. And then we got to keep going to the third person. So let's see this. Here we have go up for the same. We go sideways for different. I'm going to make these a little bigger because I'm not making enough room. So here we have three chances, right? 0, 1, and 2, 365. Uh, and then the chance that they're different is 362 over 365. Um, and notice how, so we, we, so this is okay. Um, and we can keep doing this right all the way up until the, um, nth person. So when we get to the, um, or I guess N minus one time, we would have either we have, um, N minus one options here. So N minus one over 365, um, or if it's different, we would get, uh, 365 minus n minus one over 365. Okay, cool. So these are basically, so um, our different paths that we can do. So this is our tree diagram. So a tree diagram. 
Um, and what we're saying is at this point is, okay, um, what's the probability that everyone has, that two people have at least the same birthday? So what we're asking is sum up the probability here, 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 etc. So what's this probability? Well, we're going to have to do these chains, right? So this chain is um, 1 over th one, uh, 365, right? So the probability of A is 1 over 365 plus the second one. So 2 times 365 times 364 over 365 plus this third one, which is 3 over 365 times 363 over 365 times 364 over 365 plus etc. This is disgusting um, and it's even worse because my handwriting is horrible right now. Um, this is really bad, right? Like um, it's very not cute at all. It looks super complicated. You're like, how the hell am I going to solve it? Um, and this is where um, probability kicks in and they, and they say, yo, you're trying to calculate the probability of A. Why don't you just try to calculate the opposite. Another way of doing this is looking at this rule. Well, what's the probability of a complement? Well, the probability of a complement is that all of these things fail. In other words, this, oops, uh, this is saying that no two people, no two people um, have the same birthday. And if you look on our tree diagram, we have this already, right? We just follow all the red paths. So this one here, we only have one thing we need to look at. Um, and so this is a complement. And so what we really have is one minus, now we just multiply all these things together. So we have 1 times 364 over 365 times 363 over 365 times 362 over 365 all the way up to 365 minus n minus 1 over 365. This looks like it's complicated, but it's actually significantly easier. Why is it easier? is look what happens when I change this to 365 over 365. What we have is on the bottom, I have n 365s. Uh, so this is 365 to the n. On the top, I have 365 factorial, but I remove um, everything below. So I remove 365 minus n factorial. So this is actually not too bad to, to calculate. What we basically have is the probability of A is equal to 1 minus 365 factorial over 365 minus N factorial times 365 to the N. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to do this by hand. This is disgusting by hand, um, but it's definitely like it's easily writable, it's nice and simple, and we can plug these numbers into a calculator and get answers. So for example, one might ask, well, when do we get roughly 50%? When do we have a good, ch a better chance than half-half that will win? So the pro if I set um, your, this is the fun part. So let's look at first um, if we have 190 people. So uh, if n is equal to 190, then the probability of a is so I'm going to put 190 here. So we have 1 minus 365 factorial over 365 minus uh, 190 factorial times 365 to the 190, which is massive. But what we get here is 1 minus um, 3.2 uh, six times 10 to the minus 27. So in other words, a really, 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 really big number, um, as in like really close to one. So it's almost guaranteed. Like for all intents and purposes, it's guaranteed, like it's happening. But when do we get 50-50? When is 
for what n? For which n? For which smallest n, I guess I should say. What's the smallest n uh, such that the probability of a is greater than 50%? So 0, 50%. And actually, this is the part that's really exciting. It turns out if n equals 23, so if there's 23 people in a room, then the probability of a is 0 0.507. So we have a 50.7% chance that two people will have the same birthday. That's it, 23, which is really, really tiny. Like, it's almost nothing. Um, this is a super long video um, because we went over um, this problem a lot. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool in that you see um, a lot of techniques um, that we've seen so far, right? So what are the techniques we used? We used our tree diagrams for conditional probability, right? All these multiplication tables were done through conditional probability, right? So um, this little part here, for example, is given by the probability of uh, um, the third person, uh, so probability that first person is different, first person is different, times the probability of second is different, given that the first is different, times the probability that the third is the same, given that the first and second are different, right? Um, so it just needs to match with one of them. So like we saw conditional probabilities. Another thing we saw is we saw the distribution laws, right? So remember that P is always a distribution. And so we're able to use this complement idea in order to make our lives a lot easier. Sometimes looking at the complement um, just makes everything significantly easier. Um, and then another thing we saw is sometimes something that seems impossible, like figuring this problem out, right? Like this looked impossible in the beginning. When I looked at P of A, this was like, holy fudge, how the hell am I going to solve this? I am not about to do all these calculations. I'm no, I don't have the time or the energy, but it turns out if we look at things a tiny different way in an equivalent way, it becomes much more easy. And like that, that equation is like, it's nothing. It is nothing like this equation is gorgeous, like is everything. Uh, and if you think about it, for people who want leap days, change this to 366. That's it. That's all you have to do. And you have the same formula. That's how simple this is. Like, um, so yeah, so it's like um, sometimes probability has super nice results. So in the next talk or in the next video, um, we'll start talking about what's called Bayes rule um, and Bayes rule kind of takes conditional probability and puts it on steroids um, and it, it becomes fun. Um, it'll either be um, one or two videos. We'll see while I'm recording how much um, I get done. Uh, so yeah, so I will see you all in the next video. Tons of love.